Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. I'm here to ask and answer one simple question. WTF is they bleed pixels? Well, a little bit of Lovecraftian nonsense going on in the background there, as you can clearly see. It appears to be Lovecraft versus the female version of Barney the Dinosaur. Probably not an accurate assessment. This is by a company called Spooky Squid. Don't really know how to accurately assess that either, but hey, we'll go on with it. So, what is it all about? Well, it's supposedly a fiendishly difficult platformer with combat elements and a kind of gothic horror feel to it. So, let's check it out and see what it's all about. So, first things first. This game is stuck in 720p, one way or the other, so this video is in 720p for obvious reasons. It would be nice if they were to fix that. In fact, the options menu in general just seems to lack almost everything you could possibly need. Although, it does allow you to rebind the keyboard controls. Now, I've tried this with keyboard controls, and I can happily say it actually works well. So, you can use the 360 pad or the keyboard, and you shouldn't really suffer one way or the other. Both are good. I'm using the 360 pad for this because I just prefer using that for platformers. A bunch of extras available here as well, including bonus levels. Sissy's Magical Ponycorn Adventure. They bleed ponycorns. I, we might have to try that. That might have to happen. Okay. Regardless, onward, shall we? So, I've gone through the tutorial, and this is what's going on, whatever that might be. Horribly gothic things are occurring. That is the Eldritch Book of Ketchup. Those of you who do not know. Oh, that was delicious raspberry syrup. No one really knows. Nice, interesting pixelated art style in the entire game, honestly, including in the cutscenes. This gives me a very 8-bit vibe to it, and you'll figure out why in a second. Alright. So this is one of supposedly 11, quote, massive levels. Alright, so very much 8-bit. As I think you can see, you got parallax backgrounds there, and you have these very pixelated characters. However, it is also rather violent, to say the least. An example being given there, yes, there you go. So, they do indeed bleed pixels, as I think you can probably tell. There is a one-button combat system. Now, this combat system is not what I would call simplistic. It does reward skill and big combos. Now, this is also a platformer in the vein of Super Meat Boy, and to a lesser degree, things like I Want to Be the Guy. And as a result... Bollocks. They were spikes. And as a result, you have a tendency to die a lot. You have three lives. You can get your lives back by setting up a checkpoint. What do I mean by setting up a checkpoint? Note that little dagger to the top there. That's actually a energy bar. And this can be increased via the use... Well, oh, go away! Via the use of combo attacks. So the more stylishly you finish off the enemy, the quicker that fills. Once it fills, you start to glow purple. Why do you glow purple? Well, you glow purple because... No. You glow purple because it allows you to create a checkpoint whenever you please. You have to wait in the same spot for around five seconds. There needs to be no monster nearby in order to do it. But, like, right now, for instance, if I want, and it's probably a good idea to, I can create a save point right there. So, there's the checkpoint created, and suddenly I figure out, oh god, there's spikes there, but thankfully, not too much of a problem. I could actually use those against the horrendous shambling horrors from the deep that I happen to be fighting against right here. Now, the first thing I'll say about the control system is, we're talking Meat Boy levels of tight here. It, you do actually stop on a dime. The control is superbly tight. It feels great. I don't think I need to waste the checkpoint there, but hey, we'll go with it. Ow! Well, I guess I did need to waste the checkpoint there. Never mind. Yeah, it feels really, really good and very, very responsive. When I die, I don't feel like it's because the controls were too loose. They're very fluid, they're very responsive, and they do what you want them to do. There is double jump functionality as well as wall sliding. Kind of reminds me just slightly of Strider, actually. Uh, no, no, that's spikes. No, spikes. Sp also, everything has a tendency to be slippy. You know, the areas can get slick with blood. This is covered in goop, so a little bit unpleasant there, to say the least. Anyway, the control method is great. Both with the controller and, of course, with the keyboard. All of these sound, they just feel fantastic. 
Well, I suck. I'm apparently a common Cthulhu. Ooh, an advanced tutorial. I actually had no idea what that's all about. And new guest levels available. Alright, so I'm very tempted to try the magical ponycorn level. Oh, God. Why is that even near your bed? One has to wonder. I always think could be worse. Could be Fifty Shades of Grey. A far more corrupting title. Probably less well written. Alright, onward we go to the next level. We'll try the Ponycorn Adventure level a little bit later. Now, I suppose the fact that it is a very difficult platformer is counteracted quite severely by the ability to create save points. And you seem to be able to create quite a lot of them. I balked that up completely, as you can see, but hey. Dying doesn't really matter all that much, but it does actually affect your rating. So, you get into... A similar situation with games like Dust Force, for instance, where you are going for high scores and you are going for the absolute maximum rank, which you're not going to get if you die a lot and you're certainly not going to get if you place a lot of save sigils. Yes, indeed. And that would be bad, would it not? I would love to actually... Yes, I would really, really love to kick him right into that. That might be possible. Now, the monsters don't pose a huge amount of threat as long as you start comboing them, although there is, of course, the big risk that you'll end up running into a hazard somewhere on the level and just die horribly regardless. Air combos seem to work pretty well, and indeed, they do, in fact, bleed pixels. Oh, man, I'd actually need to use a dash to get over there, wouldn't I? There we go. Hey, hey! What on earth is that? Can I get to it? No. It's probably trying to kill me. Most likely. There we go. Now, for me, this is a really nice balance, because you don't have to start the level over and over again. I, I guess that's not so great for people that are looking for a really challenging experience, but perfect runs and high scores and things like that may potentially be enough for those people. I don't know if it will or not, though. I, I'm not sure creating an ultra-difficult platformer and then saying, oh, well, you can save quite regularly is a really good idea. I didn't see any options for changing the difficulty level. That was awesome, by the way. If you hadn't already noticed, like I need to tell you that that was awesome. Holy hell, was that actually awesome? Oh yes, there we go. Get, no, get back here. But for me at least, it's very, very enjoyable. I like the fact that it is at least slightly forgiving, but you still die very, very fast. You still feel like an ass for screwing something up, but with, uh, along with many other very difficult games, you do very much learn as you go, and it's satisfying to do that. Very much so. It helps that the combat system feels extremely visceral. Even though it's a one-button combat system, and even though it's quite obviously done in the 8-bit style, it does still it does still feel visceral. <laughs> There's a lot of really nice pixelated blood. The monsters are genuinely quite horrific in places. Oh, I almost had that. I see what I have to do there, but I screwed it up completely, so let's just give it another try. There we go. Now, the advanced tutorial might... Ch teach me a couple of different combo moves, but there's a basic set, you know, you can, you can combo in the air, you can kick upwards by holding down the button, a simple kick will kick forward, so kicking onto spikes and into chainsaws is a completely viable combat option, you can attack upwards like that, and then you can just kind of do an, a dash and combo, let's not dash and combo directly into the spikes, thank you very much. And I would say that's probably enough. I mean, it would be nice maybe to see some collectible weapons and things like that, but the combat system in its current form does feel pretty... Ugh. Does feel pretty damn good, to be honest. So it's, it's fairly difficult to complain. And I think this game is striking a nice balance between being a precision platformer and being a combat platformer, an action platformer, and indeed to some limited degree a brawler. And maybe even you could describe it as a Castlevania style of game to some degree. I think it mashes things up very nicely, and it doesn't really sacrifice too much on any aspect. Which is a big risk when you create a game like this. Oh, for crying out loud, I am terrible at it, though. Good lord. I, I enjoy it, certainly. It it's, it's, I enjoy it in the same way that I enjoy Dark Souls. I know that I'm bad at it, but I like the eventual progress. But every now and again, you just get into this rather sad state of affairs where you do worse than you did the last time. There we go. Have you trigger that? There we go. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Now let's try not to screw this up this time. I'm not going to make this a wipeathon 3000. Yeah, or maybe I am. 
The Wipeathon 3000, like the Super Meat Boy video, yes. Or let's not even get started with the I Wanna Be The Guy, which was, of course, a big, giant, fake rage fest that for some reason you actually liked, good lord. This is not like I Wanna Be The Guy, though, and I Wanna Be The Guy isn't really satisfying. That game is out to dick you over at every possible opportunity. This, along with Super Meat Boy and a couple of other very well-designed games, such as Dark Souls, is out to teach you. It's a harsh teacher, a very, very harsh teacher indeed. Like this teacher beats you with a strap when you have a spelling mistake on your work. But it's doing it because it knows that eventually you will learn and you will oh, and you will feel good about that. And you will feel a genuine sense of accomplishment. And you'll also know that every time you made a mistake, it was your fault. I haven't really experienced any cheap deaths in this game thus far. There may be later on in it. I mean, there are 11 very, very large levels indeed. But at this stage, I'm not seeing that. All I'm seeing is my own personal incompetence arrayed before me in a shower of blood and guts. Which is, quite frankly, the best way to array incompetence in front of anyone when it comes to video games. Ooh, this timing is going to be... No, 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 no! <laughs> Just... Oh, fucking... Oh! Oh! But it is damn tricky. Uh, anyone that tells you otherwise is a big liar. So do I have any problems with it? Only minor complaints, really. I think the minor complaints come in the form of some of the spikes are not that obvious, like they blend into the terrain. In this case, since the entire terrain is just black and white outlines, not a big deal. But in the previous levels, there were some spikes which weren't all that obvious. So that was a little bit frustrating. That feels ever so slightly cheap, but I guess that's just my unfamiliarity with the game shining through there rather than anything else. I'm still not 100% sure whether the save system is a good idea if you happen to be trying to... I could just go up here, couldn't I? That makes it much easier. If you are trying to appeal to a more hardcore audience, will they want to use that? But at least it's kind of optional. Now, unfortunately, it's actually getting blocked right there. Is there any way I can place it? No, it's not going to let me place it down here, is it? All right, I'm going to have to make the run. Is there anything below here that's going to kill me? No, I guess I can save it here. Wonderful. Again, since it's optional, you do have to stand there for upwards of five seconds to actually get the thing to spawn, and you are rewarded score for not using it. I think that perhaps that is maybe... Why did I even attempt that? I think that is perhaps enough to make it justifiable for the hardcore crowd. For me, who is just terrible at video games, it's totally... Ah, oh, come on! <laughs> for me, it's absolutely fine. And it's actually a really satisfying platform experience. It's, it's the same principle as Super Meat Boy with the really, really awesome controls, but now they've added combat into it as well, which is something that I feel was missing from Super Meat Boy. I mean, the, the boss fights in Super Meat Boy were more of gauntlet runs than anything else, rather than actually being a, a genuine boss fight where cool things would happen. And I don't know, when it comes to gore, I think this game might actually have Meat Boy beat, which is pretty difficult considering. Oh, yes, yes, indeed. Have some of that. Ah, just, no, no, no! Come on. It's fun. I haven't actually talked about the soundtrack yet. The soundtrack's pretty cool. Definitely not terrible. It's not some of the best chiptune work I've ever heard, but I think it, it suits the game quite nicely and, once again, evokes that nice 8-bit feel. I tell you, if, if there were games of this quality that came out of the 8-bit era, then I would be, quite frankly, stunned. It's just how tight the controls are that really impresses me consistently. The way that the levels are very well designed. It's almost like everything is kept in a fairly simplistic way. They've created everything just to be the bare bones of what it needs to be to be a challenging game. There's very little confusing nonsense going on. The backgrounds are sufficiently grim, but they don't get in the way. And everything about the game is, of course, out to bloody kill you. But you can slaughter everything in the game as well, so... Hard to complain in that regard. Oh, Lord, are you serious? <laughs> Apparently, they're serious. All right. Let's get up a little bit higher and double jump to the other side. Onto there. Nope. You go that way. There we go. Nobody likes you. Ooh, I need some power so I can actually get my health back. Off you go. Thank you. That might give me the combo I need. No, I'm going to have to kill one more. And that's where the game gets really, really tense. You think, ooh, I've got to kill one more guy. Come on. Just, there you go. Wonderful. And then we can get the checkpoints put down. 
as regards to my misgivings about the save system, at least it's unique. I, I, I can't think of any games off the top of my head that allow you to do what this game allows you to do. There may be one, but again, if you do know, then please, by all means... Uh, comment in the section below, you know, just kill myself, whatever, I'm not going for a high score here anyway. I'm going to try and get through this level, and then I'm going to try and do the Magical Ponycorn Adventure one, just because I'm a little bit curious, to say the least. And so far, though, it's really hard not to recommend this if this is the kind of game that you're into. If you enjoy games like VVV, VVV, if you enjoy games like Meat Boy, even if you somehow, against all common sense and logic, manage to enjoy I Want to Be the Guy then you'll probably have a lot of fun with this. Obviously, the combat aspect might be something that you don't necessarily want. There wasn't a lot of that in VVV. There wasn't a lot of that in Super Meat Boy at all. Needless to say, da, da, da. there was some combat in I Want to Be the Guy, but it was basic to say the least. The game wasn't really designed around that. Go on, have a just There you go. I want to grab that again. I'll probably just die in the process, but... I like how it just doesn't quite give you enough to actually set up a save point down here. This might do the trick. But then again, there'd be nowhere that I can actually deploy it. Oh, Christ! <laughs> Don't double jump there! Why would you do that? I'll probably abandon this level shortly just so I can show you the Ponycorn adventure video and then I can come to a conclusion. I'm impressed, though. I really am. I don't know what I was really expecting. I'm, I'm not... Uh, the kind of person that really likes hardcore platformers. I think maybe the addition of the combat element is what sets it apart for me, and also the rather nice Lovecraftian theme that they've got going on. You know, i actually say something else that do doesn't really appeal to me necessarily is the whole idea of the whole 8-bit thing. Some people find it charming. Personally, I don't really see the point. I guess I th that's probably my fault. I mean, my childhood wasn't actually filled with 8-bit console games. Quite the contrary, I barely played anything on NES or Master System. Please don't tell me it's going through there. Alright, wonderful. Excellent, excellent. Let's hop over there, and then we can set up the save point and get our life back. Yes. Uh, what? Well, that's just mean and unreasonable. Talking about things to dick you over, I think that... Uh, come on! Why would you... Why would you put that there? I don't even know what that is. It's so 8-bit, it's like... Nameless, sodding, formless, shog off the run horror. Get off. Thank you very much. Again, I never really played any 8-bit games, so... Obviously, later on in life, I had the chance to play stuff like Mario and Zelda and stuff like that, but... This is not the kind of retro theme that really interests me to a huge degree. I think just making a run and trying to jump over that probably... make No, not like that. Try it again. Let's go higher. Oh, that's a bomb. No! Ah! Well, okay, I'll I'll take it, I'll take it. Oh, in order to get access to that, I'm going to have to detonate them. So you can cheese it, or you can detonate those. You know what? I have no interest in getting all the collectibles on this level. Just screw it. Screw it! It's not what I'm here for. I'm here for it to give me an E-ranking, a laugh at my terrible, terrible play. Which is what you're doing right now. But I think because this level is so massive, we might just end up aborting it and heading on into the Ponycorn adventure. So let, let's go and have a look at that. I'm very curious to know what's going on with that. So there are these extra guest levels, as you can see. Seraph bleeds Stardust, and they bleed Ponycorn. Sissy's Magical Ponycorn Adventure versus They Bleed Pixels. Yes. Let us have a look at it. Behold, They Bleed Ponycorns. And I freaking love Ponycorn. Ponycorn. Really? Oh my. Okay, <laughs> welcome to the Magical Ponycorn Adventure, which is still actually as grim, if not grimmer, than the previous one. I should probably just actually kill him, shouldn't I? There we go. Cute. <laughs> God. Why is this here? Why? Who thought this was a good idea? <laughs> oh, it's the icing on the cake, isn't it, really? Just in case... They bleed pixels were a little bit too grim for you. Don't worry, because Ponycorn event- You still get horribly decapitated in it, but we'll just ignore that, shall we? Oh my. All right, folks. They bleed pixels is currently out on Steam for the price of $9.99, £6.99, or €9.99. The soundtrack is available separately for 
I think it's $5, 4 pounds or 5 euros. Collector's Edition saves you a little bit in that regard if you want to get a hold of the soundtrack. I, I'm not that big a fan of the soundtrack. It's it's good, but it's nothing that I would go crazy for. It's not like the Frozen Sign Up soundtrack or the Meat Boy soundtrack or anything like that, but it's still pretty good. There you go, folks. God, even the bloody Ponycorn level's too sodding hard for me. I'm a cosmic failure. My name is Total Biscuit. Taking a look at They Bleed Pixels. Go check it out on Steam. Heartily recommended if this is your kind of thing. I shall see you next time.